our last speaker is Kay Yang. <laughs> Yay, I'm so excited. Kay Yang is the creator of StopFemaleErasure.com and the writer, filmmaker, artist, and activist behind The Deprogrammer. Yang exposes the intersections of corporate, government, nonprofit collusion driving transgender, the transgender rights movement, in quotes, a smokescreen for massive social engineering, and propaganda war being used to facilitate female erasure in language and in law on a worldwide scale. Her work connects the dots between normalized practices of child sexualization and the proliferation of biopharmaceutical transhumanist technologies and frames these agendas as foundational to the colonization of the female body and female reproductive control. Kay Yang's perspective is uniquely informed from her past experiences indoctrinating youth with, quote, gender identity ideology in New York public schools while working at an LGBT nonprofit funded by the New York State Department of Health. Oh. <laughs> she was recently featured on radio host Glenn Beck's podcast, as well as Fox and Friends. Thank you so much, everyone. Hi, welcome. It's great to see you all here. I know that um, we've all been here for a while and sitting for a long time, but I promise you this is going to make you fall out of your seats. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a lot here. I have a visual presentation the whole way through, and I'll be speaking, packing a lot in, so feel free to ask me any questions later. I can elaborate or clarify on anything. So I just want to thank, first of all, um, Partners for Ethical Care. I want to thank Jennifer, Jeanette, Alex, Martha, Katie, who's also here. Oh, there's Jen. <laughs> We're, oh, OK, what? Donna, Donna's here. Hey, Donna. So thank you to Partners for Ethical Care for putting on um, this, uh, this event. And Jay, hi Jay, I know you're at home. You did a lot of hard work for this, thank you so much. Uh-oh, I see my, when it downloaded, it looks a little different than it did on my computer, so I don't know how much different it is, we'll see. Um, <laughs> so thank you for producing this event, and I wanna thank all of you for being here tonight and showing up for this, despite all of the different, you know, we got moved to a different location, there's threats, people are crazy. I understand, um, and thank you for traveling to be here. And I wanna thank my fellow panelists, of course, Amy and Candace and Jennifer and Brandon, and where is everybody else? Okay, all right, Alex is over here, all right, and Isabella, thank you so much. So my name is Kay Yang, and this is another public record of my descent. <laughs> thank you. In 2011, um, let's see if we can get this going. All right. In 2000, so the fonts kind of messed up. It wasn't like this before, but in the download, I guess that's what happened. In 2011, I was hired at a local nonprofit to conduct LGBT community outreach and education. So like my other young friends who gravitated to these types of jobs, um, I wanted to make the world a better place and protect people from violence and discrimination. I had no idea that I was being used as a Trojan horse for a massive marketing campaign to normalize policies and practices that cause irreversible medical damage to healthy children and undermine the sex-based rights of women and girls. So my responsibilities included a lot of things. I know um, Amy showed the genderbred person, so that's one of the tools that I would bring into classrooms with me. Um, my responsibilities included collating and completing program-wide reports, and this was required by our funders. This is a request over here. I pulled this up from my old emails. I don't know how I still had it, but I did. I've saved it all the way through. It's from June 2012 to May 2013 is the funding period. The funding source, I know it's really small and hard to see, but the funding source is the New York State Department of Health, the AIDS Institute specifically, and the initiative is LGBT Health and Human Services. 
So I want to stress that more teens reporting LGBT identities meant more funding from the New York State Department of Health. Okay, that's how that works. So um, this is what the last slide actually. In New York, um, oh, my mic's still going? Okay. In New York, uh, AIDS education, it's required in all of the districts, but individual districts, they get to decide what type of additional sex education, if any, they provide at all. So only AIDS um, education is required. Sex ed, it's their, their, their choice. So the curriculum varies by school district. Um, and the nonprofit that I worked for provides sexual health education services for local area schools. So back then, no one had ever heard of a trans kid, right? No one had heard of this. Um, the work we were doing was actually paving the way for the acceptance of the mass-produced trans child. So in 2021, the UCLA Williams School of Law reported 1.6 million children, 13 and up, claimed a trans identity in the United States. Okay, these numbers are attributed to children feeling safe to come out and better data collection. But in reality, this is indicative of widespread social engineering and indoctrination. Okay, according to Global Market Insights Incorporated, the global sex reassignment market is expected to surpass $1.5 billion by 2026. This market demands that more children adopt a trans identity. If they do not, the market will cease to exist. Unbeknownst to me, I was being used on the front lines of this marketing campaign, pushing disembodiment and selling medicalization in the name of gender identity and trans rights. So as I was indoctrinating students in the public schools, I was being indoctrinated myself. I was considered an expert, yet I had no understanding about trans and gender identities until I was trained through materials coming from larger nonprofits like GLSEN. GLSEN, the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network, was established in 1990. The tax-exempt nonprofit is the leading national educational organization focused on ensuring safe schools for all students. Under the guise of school safety, anti-bullying, and inclusivity, gender identity was sold to unsuspecting parents, teachers, and students as a well-intended solution to fight discrimination faced by gender non-conforming and LGB youth. From 2010 to 2013, GLSEN conducted a campaign to provide every middle and high school in the U.S. with a safe space kit. Grant funding shipped a bulk order, uh, shipped out bulk orders to contacts at different organizations across the country to distribute locally in schools. So I had a stack of these kits behind my desk. They contained stickers and posters for educators to put up in their classrooms and offices as nonverbal signals that they are an open and accepting staff member who can be in a trusted adult that children can safely talk about LGBT issues with instead of their parents. In 2011, I was part of administering the GLSEN National School Climate Survey on, quote, the experiences of LGB and transgender youth in our nation's schools. The survey reported an alarmingly hostile school climate for LGBT students in America. <clears throat> Some of the hostilities reported include male students who were not allowed to be considered viable candidates for homecoming queen, or male students who were not permitted to use female bathrooms or locker rooms. This is all in the reports. Um, this is the explicit manipulation of the language of anti-bullying and school safety to advance trans ideology, compel speech, and eliminate the safety, privacy, and dignity of female students at school. So I was a founding member of my high school's Gay Straight Alliance, the first one in our school. Um, later, while working at the LGBT Center, 
I helped establish gay straight alliances in local area high schools and colleges. <clears throat> Wherever we went, including the high schools, we would distribute rainbow color condoms, offering children to take whatever they need. <laughs> yes, so these schools and after school clubs allow children to this day, of course, to talk about sex and transgender identities with each other, with teachers and staff from the LGBT center without the knowledge or consent of their parents. So today, so before it was the Gay Straight Alliance, today these organizations are known as Gender Sexuality Alliances, emphasizing the focus, of course, on sex and gender identity. The first GSA was introduced in 1988 by a man named Kevin Jennings to, quote, build bridges among students of all sexual orientation and gender identity whether they identify as gay, straight, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. <clears throat> GSAs teach children how to become advocates for LGBT causes and agents of social change. <clears throat> so two years after the first Gay Straight Alliance, Jennings funded GLSEN in 1990, with a focus on, quote, transforming our nation's schools into the safe and affirming environment that youth deserve, regardless of their gender identity. So there's a lot more I would like to say about Glisten and Kevin Jennings in particular, but in the interest of time, I'm gonna skip ahead to 2009 to highlight Jennings' appointment, <clears throat> appointment by Obama to the US Department of Education as the Assistant Deputy Secretary for the Office of Safe and Drug-Free Schools. Between 2007 and 2018, Glisten received nearly $3 million in grants from the nation's largest LGBT funder, the Arcus Foundation, a private entity founded by John Stryker. In 2012, Jennings was appointed executive director of Arcus. Investigative, investigative journalist Jennifer Billick, founder of the 11th Hour blog, writes, <laughs> yes, we love Jennifer Billick. Jennifer Billick writes, quote, Arcus deploys millions of philanthropic dollars each year to filter gender identity and transgender ideology into American law through their training of leaders in political activism, political leadership, transgender law, religious liberty, education, and civil rights. So John Stryker, oh my slides, they did not come out how they were supposed to when they downloaded. Sorry about that, y'all. Okay, so <laughs> John Stryker is heir to the Stryker Medical Corporation the Fortune 500 medical supplies company founded by his grandfather. So if you ever see in the hospitals, it says Stryker along the bottom of the bed. That's this family. <clears throat> okay, so um, Stryker's top medical investors include BlackRock and Vanguard. These are the world's leading largest asset managers. So is this an agenda? Yes. <laughs> um, Stryker's private foundation, Arcus, awarded over $58 million to LGBT-focused organizations between 2007 and 2010 alone. Writing for Gender Descent, Felicia Rembrandt traced, it, traced nearly $900,000 of Arcus grant money to ARC International, which is a Canadian-based propaganda and lobbying firm. Public records show donations received from Arcus Foundation financed ARC International's propagation of the Yogya Karta principles. Yogya Karta principles, okay? The Yogya Karta principles, these are a sort of wish list for the LGBT lobby. They hold no legal bearing themselves, but they do gain power when adopted in whole or in part by human rights instruments. In 2011, the United Nations issued its first report on sexual orientation and gender identity, also known as SOGI. It used the Yogyakarta principles definition of gender identity. Quote, 
Gender identity is understood to refer to each person's deeply felt internal and individual experience of gender, which may or may not correspond with the sex assigned at birth, end quote. So in other words, gender identity is completely subjective and has no basis in biological or material reality. In 2015, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, AKA Agenda 2030, was universally adopted by all 193 member nations. The joint endeavor between the UN, national and local governments, the private sector, civil society, academia, and multilateral organizations aims to restructure the world's economy, society, and environment by the year 2030. Goal five, which they call gender equality, cuts across all of the goals. Within the framework of gender equality, all people, every single one of you, all people are said to have a gender identity. The Sustainable Development Goals provide a blueprint for governments and organizations to implement sweeping changes to laws and policies that will gut the sex-based rights of women and girls and render the binary of sex illegible as a meaningful category. In 2013, the Arcus Foundation and IBM funded GLSEN, the organization I was talking about before, and UNESCO, which is the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, to form the global network combating homophobic and transphobic prejudice in schools. So 2013, they go global. In 2017, UNESCO published a global status report on school violence and bullying as part of the UN's monitoring of the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. GLSEN is thanked for providing the data from their national school climate surveys, the same survey I helped to administer for GLSEN in 2011. Under the guise of ending bullying at school and at home, the UN Human Rights Office of the High Commissioner promotes trans and gender identities for children. A 2019 report endorses the recommendation from the Office of the High Commissioner and promotes legal recommendation of gender identity that is simple, based on self-identification and available to minors. The Partnership for Global LGBTIQ Plus Equality is an initiative of BSR, the United Nations, and the World Economic Forum launched in Davos, Switzerland at the 2019 Annual Meeting of the World Economic Forum. Together, organizations and corporations work with the private sector, leveraging their individual and collective money and power to advocate for and accelerate global LGBT equality and inclusion in the workplace. Their well-documented plans make it very clear that, quote, Companies that fail to stand up for LGBT inclusion risk losing investment. It's starting to make sense? In other words, those who won't go along will not make it in the new economy. According to the Partnership for Global LGBTIQ Plus Equality, it is very important that all sectors of society incorporate, quote, safe and non-discriminatory access to bathrooms and other single-sex facilities for trans people. So, yeah, you can look at those companies. <laughs> so, this Orwellian newspeak translates to elimination of sex-specific bathroom facilities for women and girls by allowing males to use female bathrooms in, quote, accordance with their self-reported gender identity. Data reveals, of course, that unisex facilities put women and girls in significant danger of sexual assault. In March 2022, <laughs> In March 2022, I organized the first ever demonstration against the United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Goals at the United Nations headquarters in New York City. 
<laughs> Thank you. In a massive act of solidarity, a small nonpartisan coalition of grassroots women campaigners, including Isabella and Amy Souza, of course, and Jeanette Cooper from Partners for Ethical Care, and Jennifer De La Sega from Partners of, for Ethical Care, and, can I and Amy Kreit from um, Parents of Okay, well, just Amy Kreit. <laughs> So some of the wonderful women in this room were there and made that happen. Um, so we joined forces creating a public record of our dissent to policies that threaten and undermine sex-based provisions of women and girls in the name of gender equality. 20 days later, of course, the United Nations Human Rights YouTube published a video, Stand in Solidarity with hashtag all women. The colorful vector cartoon is overlaid with text, I am a woman and I am trans simply by existing as I am. All LGBTIQ plus women are women. Right. <laughs> In July 2022, the World Health Organization, which we should all be familiar with at this point, right? Um, the World Health Organization, the UN agency, the United Nations agency responsible for international public health, issued an announcement. Their widely used gender mainstreaming manual is being updated. Aren't you excited? Their manual is being updated to go, quote, beyond non-binary approaches to gender and health to recognize gender and sexual diversity or the concepts that gender identity exists on a continuum and that sex is not limited to male or female, end quote. The World Health Organization, everyone, yay. So impacts, on the United, um, impacts of the United Nations gender equality agenda are already being felt by women in Scotland. The United Nations gender identity expert, expert, urged the Scottish government to adopt the gender recognition reform bill saying, quote, trans women are among the most vilified, disenfranchised, stigmatized people on this planet, end quote. The gender recognition reform bill allows anyone 16 and up in Scotland to legally change sex in six months without diagnoses or medical evidence. At UN Human Rights on Twitter celebrated the victory tweeting a repeating message in all caps um, with alternating white, baby pink, and baby blue text, quote, trans rights are human rights. So if you're wondering where that phrase comes from, this is where it comes from. It wasn't made up by some activist somewhere. And the United Nations refers to youth as agents of change. The <laughs> youth are agents of change in, quote, the process of transformative action on the generation equality journey. So they're really relying on tapping into and exploiting young people, just like they did to me, to, to push this and force this. Youth are invited to demand, lead, act, and create to accelerate progress for gender equality by 2030. One of the listed demands says, I demand that our trans sisters are treated and respected in the same way as cis women. In New York, in New York City, myself, um, Jeanette and Jennifer of Partners for Ethical Care, my fellow panelists, Jennifer Lal, and of course, Amy Souza, my co-organizer for the event, along with Amanda Stuhlman from Keep Prison Single Sex, um, we all faced down a violent, angry mob outside of City Hall. In the lead up to the event, um, in the lead up to the event, a flyer circulated I'm sorry, demanding the Let Women Speak event be shut down. On the flyer, cartoon people can be seen holding up rainbow flags, trans and Antifa flags. Okay, now just really quick, here's the imagery from the UN. Here's their flyer, very similar, right? So, so you can see the rainbow flags, the trans and Antifa flags, and then a giant boot can be seen stomping down on the women who cower in fear and hold their heads on the ground. And a woman holding a bullhorn holds a sign that reads, I have this coming. 
Mm. At the event, myself and Gina Hoke were both spit on by the man on the right, top of um, the, all the way on the right there. His name is Anthony Martucci, who walked for a coach, never heard of that brand, anybody? Um, at the New York City Fashion Week. So when the barricades were breached, um, my head and hair was grabbed by a trans rights activist, a man who identifies as a woman, and he had threatened to rip the hair out of my head a year prior outside of a panel organized by Jennifer Law in New York City. So he came back a year later to harass myself and also Karen Davis, who's um, on YouTube, you're kidding, right? Um, harassed both of us. Um, one of the trans rights activists present, a trans identified female, who is actually Castle MacArthur, who Amy spoke of in the beginning. I heard everyone gasping, going, oh my God. The same person is right there, right there, follow the arrow. Um, a trans identified female who sported a naked chest with double mastectomy scars who was also featured on a panel for gender equality at the United Nations headquarters in New York City. One of, um, so is this what it looks like to be a United Nations agent of change for gender equality? In New Zealand, yes. In New Zealand, Kelly J. Keene and other In New Zealand, Kelly J. Keene and other female campaigners were attacked by a violent mob of hundreds. A male named Eli Rubashkin rushed the stage and assaulted Kelly J. dousing her in tomato soup. He gloated about it in the media and online, on his Twitter and everywhere else. And here, Rubashkin can be seen posing at the United Nations headquarters in New York City. In 2013, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees actually recognized Rubashkin as a woman, and he became the first male in Hong Kong or China to be recognized as a woman without having undergone um, medical intervention. I ask again, is this what it looks like to be a United Nations agent of change for gender equality? As Jennifer Billick notes, oh, the slides are so messed up. I'm sorry, guys. I'm very. <laughs> so as Jennifer Billick notes, although activists present the LGBT movement as a weak, powerless group suffering oppression and discrimination, in truth, it wields enormous power and influence, power it increasingly uses to remake our laws, schools, and society. This is a targeted attack on women, children, and humanity. This is a targeted attack on women, children, and humanity coordinated through collusion of the state, corporate, and private sectors with seemingly benevolent nonprofit organizations pushing propaganda and targeting children in the public school system. The call for trans rights is a smokescreen for a massive social engineering and propaganda war, <clears throat> redefining what it means to be human and changing laws and policies on a local, regional, state, and federal level. The duplicitous framework of gender identity deliberately obfuscates the meaning of sex in international human rights law, posing a monumental threat to females as a sex class and by extension, all of humanity. To claim sex as a spectrum is to defy and transgress the sexually dimorphic nature of our reality to challenge and make an affront to the very basis of human sexual reproduction. A deep disrespect to all fathers and especially all mothers of this world. Yes. Gender identity is not about freedom or liberation. Gender identity is not based in biology or the material world. Gender identity is anti-reality gaslighting on a mass scale. Yeah. 
The trans rights movement is authoritarian and supremacist in nature. We must reject medicalization and sterilization of gender non-conforming and LGB youth taught to see themselves as trans kids. We must fight back against this system, teaching children to view their healthy bodies with contempt and hatred in the name of love and acceptance. I will not comply, I will not consent, and I will not capitulate. Join me, join me in holding the line for reality and for humanity. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.